and uh, uh, next is a foil character uh, what do you mean by foil character a character whose qualities or actions serve to emphasize those of the protagonist by providing a strong contrast that is a foil character uh, and so uh, the foil character uh, will be having qualities opposite to that of the protagonist and then the pro the character of the protagonist will become more prominent uh, and then another character is confident a uh, confident is a minor character in whom the protagonist confides his or her secrets and feelings uh, and so uh, you understood what is foil character confident who is a confident confident is a minor character uh, to whom the protagonist um, he or she uh, the protagonist will be confessing or confiding her secrets and feelings and so that is a confident uh, then uh, the next term is intrigue what is intrigue a secret scheme or conspiracy between two or more characters understood a, or it can be even a single character plotting against the central character and so intrigue uh, is the next term uh, with which you should be familiar intrigue means a secret scheme or conspiracy uh, of one or more characters uh, and then uh, you have the plot and the subplot uh, in some stories or in uh, some drama some novels there will be a subplot uh, moving along with uh, the main plot uh, and see uh, when you go through the character of king lear king lear a very famous tragedy written by william shakespeare one of the best tragedies written by shakespeare is king lear and so the main plot is the story of king lear and his three daughters are the two villainous daughters and the youngest daughter cordelia a very angelic character uh, and the two eldest daughters Ah, uh, see, they are presented as vultures. Ah, uh, they plot against their own father, King Lear. That is the main plot. Ah, uh, but uh, uh, there is another uh, plot, a subplot running parallel to the main plot. Ah, uh, that is uh, uh, the story of the Earl of Gloucester and his two sons, Edgar and Edmund. Ah, uh, and. Uh, and the first one uh, is very loyal to the father but the second is an arch villain uh, and so that is you understood uh, now you have understood what what's the meaning of plot then characterization and when we talked about the characters discussed about the characters you were told who is a uh, protagonist uh, who is a hero who is an anti hero Uh, who is an antagonist a uh, antagonist is a uh, uh, one who opposes the protagonist is the antagonist uh, and then i have given you the example of macbeth uh, and then uh, i told you that uh, when uh, the protagonist is macbeth uh, um, uh, the, the antagonist is macduff this said uh, and see Uh, um you understood uh, what is the meaning of hero and the hero and so on and then the next term is foil character a foil character character whose qualities provide a contrast with that of the protagonist so that the character of the protagonist is made more specific and clear and then confident confident means a minor character to whom Uh, the protagonist confides his or her feelings then intrigue 
ആ ഇൻട്രീക് ഈസ് എ സീക്രട്ട് പ്ലോട്ട് ഓർ എ സീക്രട്ട് സ്കീം വെർ വൺ ഓർ മോർ ക്യാരക്ടേഴ്സ് ആർ ഇൻവോൾഡ് ദെൻ ഐ ടോൾഡ് യു ഐ ഹാവ് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ടു യു വോട്ട് ഈസ് എ മെയിൻ പ്ലോട്ട് ആൻഡ് എ സബ് പ്ലോട്ട് ആ മെയിൻ പ്ലോട്ട് ദി മെയിൻ സ്റ്റോറി ആൻഡ് ദി സബ് പ്ലോട്ട് അനദർ വൺ വിച്ച് റൺസ് പാരലൽ ടു ദി മെയിൻ പ്ലോട്ട് and again i have given you the example of uh, william shakespeare's uh, king lear uh, king lear is the story of lear and his three daughters that is the main plot the villainy of the two elder daughters of king lear and then there is a sub plot running parallel to the main plot that is the story of gluster gluster earl of gluster uh, is a close friend of king lear and he had two sons edgar and edmund and edgar is virtuous whereas edmund is an arch villain and so that is main plot the main story and the sub story i hope you have understood and then uh, regarding the um uh, the structure of a five act play uh, there is uh, in your text you have the text with you i uh, go through the pages uh, you will see a uh, freight tax pyramid the pyramid structure uh, or the five sections of a uh, play uh, especially in a tragedy which are the five sections uh, and so the uh, freight tax py- pyramid uh, the concept regarding the structure of the five act play you get here in freight tax pyramid and so uh, five um, you know, five parts are there the first uh, actually it corresponds to the five acts of a play this this is very much true in the case of a tragedy understood freight tag pyramid is the five act structure uh, and the concept regarding the five act structure and so act 1 is called introduction or exposition a uh, introduction or exposition here you are getting the background information of the plot and the characters are introduced you are getting an idea of the setting understood and so uh, a freight tax pyramid according to this pyramidal structure a uh, every play especially a tragedy have five sections or five segments our uh, act 1 will be the introduction which is also called exposition and the second segment is called rising action third climax fourth falling action and the last one catastrophe or denouement or resolution uh and so these are see this is well explained in your text uh, but uh, only this much is there the five act structure uh see act 1 is the introduction it is also called exposition what is the p- purpose of act 1 that is act 1 should provide the background information of the plot and introduces characters and setting i uh, understood and so uh, in act 1 in a play as per the freight tax pyramid i uh, it is the uh, act of exposition i uh, you are getting the background information then the characters are introduced you are getting an idea of the setting and uh, this exposition usually contains an inciting incident that reveals the conflict in the play and makes the plot move forward and the second part is called rising action and during the rising action the plot becomes more complicated and the conflict intensifies understood and then the third one, and so in in the first act the background and the setting is revealed background information you are getting and uh, a hint on an inciting incident will be mentioned there and in second part in act 2 you have the rising uh, action 
റൈസിംഗ് ആക്ഷൻ മീനിങ് സി ഡി പ്ലോട്ട് ബിക്കംസ് മോർ കോംപ്ലിക്കേറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് ദി കോൺഫ്ലിക്റ്റ് ഇൻറ്റൻസിഫൈസ് ഇൻ ആക്ട് വൺ എ സജഷൻ ഈസ് ഗിവൺ ഓഫ് ആൻ ഇൻസൈറ്റിംഗ് ഇൻസിഡൻറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കംസ് മോർ അക്യൂട്ട് ദൻ ഇൻ തേർഡ് വൺ യു ഹാവ് ദി ക്ലൈമാക്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദി തേർഡ് സെഗ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് എ പ്ലേ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദി ക്ലൈമാക്സ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഫോളിങ് ആക്ഷൻ മൂവിംഗ് ഡൗൺ and finally catastrophe catastrophe is the term used in the case of a tragedy ah see it is the another term is denouement resolution and so a simple example see to make things clear ah julius caesar see you are familiar with these characters uh, and with these plays that is why i am taking examples from william shakespeare Uh, because you are familiar with this place uh, and so he has written uh, a play a tragedy uh, called julius caesar william shakespeare had written uh, julius caesar and uh, in act 1 of julius caesar i uh, see the main characters are introduced you understood who is julius caesar and uh, who is brutus and uh, you are getting an idea of all the important characters in addition uh, you got the information about uh, 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 about the death of pompey or the murder of pompey and you also get an idea of a conspiracy against uh, julius caesar and so you get the background information in act 1 the characters and the important issue ah uh, what is the important issue suggested the clash between julius caesar and the conspirators and the conspirators include uh, brutus cassius casca cinna and so on and uh, you understood that they were the conspirators were supporters of pompey pompey is killed uh, by julius caesar and julius caesar comes to power but a plot by the conspirators is developing against julius caesar and in act 2 you see rising action a rising action uh, where the plot is intensified issues becomes complicated the conspirators ah uh, say they got uh, the support of marcus brutus Uh, who is a great friend of Julius Caesar uh, a very loyal but not practical uh, friend uh, who is an idealist and then uh, Brutus also turns against Julius Caesar and so the plot becomes complicated in act 2 in act 3 Julius Caesar is murdered in that is the climax and the uh, uh in act 4 you have the falling action ah uh, finally see after the death of julius caesar ah uh, other characters come to the stage like octavius caesar the nephew of julius caesar ah uh, and then mark antony ah uh, and see uh, you will see how the conspirators are attacked and silenced by mark antony and octavius caesar ah uh, and so the conspirators they are becoming weak in act 4 falling action and finally you have act 5 uh, uh, that is the final catastrophe where a uh, mark antony uh, kills a uh, brutus cassius uh, brutus and other conspirators cassius commit suicide he was forced to commit suicide ah uh, and so that is the um, uh, catastrophe and so that is the five act structure this is called the fred tax pyramid and so uh, see in order to remember these sessions try to have a play in mind a uh, see a simple one is julius caesar it will provide a good example for you see introduction also called exposition act 1 you are getting background information of the plot 
and then um, characters and setting uh, everything introduced uh, and uh, then you have the rising action then the climax falling action and catastrophe remember uh, Julius Caesar the tragedy written by William Shakespeare uh, Julius C in act one in exposition you are getting an idea of Julius Caesar and other main characters and the setting of the play and you will hear about the murder of Pompey uh, and then you will get a hint of the conspiracy developing against Julius Caesar. I told you that there will be an inciting incident in exposition and uh, after that uh, uh, you will see in act two rising action conspiracy becoming uh, more uh, serious complicated plot becomes complicated in act three you have the climax where Julius Caesar is murdered by the conspirators and then in act four then coming down falling action where uh, the conspirators becoming weak and uh, uh, the supporters of Caesar gaining power. Mark Antony and Octavius Caesar coming to power and in Act 5 it is called the final catastrophe. A final catastrophe what happens there? Uh, there Mark Antony and Julius Caesar. See the triumvirate is formed uh, and uh, the conspirators are all killed and so that is it. This is the five act structure. Hope you have understood all these important terms.